It's your girl Maya Elise and you are tuned in to the first episode of Glow Up Guidance brought to you by my brand Glimmer by Elise Cosmetics on the lips, okay? In this episode, we'll be launching my first series, Hotties with Herpes, a combination of videos dedicated to helping women embrace their positive herpes status. I want to use this first video as an opportunity to open up about my positive status, share a quick story time, and let y'all know what to expect throughout the remainder of this series. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So back in 2019, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia, and this was the first time I was living on my own away from immediate family. And I met this guy who was living in my apartment complex. Y'all, he was charming, he was sweet, and he was also a felon. So there goes that. This was the type of guy that was persuasive and gentle, so obviously I trusted him. Y'all, fast forward to Halloween 2019, and I get invited to a Halloween party. Superwoman was my costume that year. I had my costume ready to go. The thigh-high boots were ready to go. It was about to be a good night. Y'all, why did the guy in my apartment complex text me and ask that I want to go to the liquor store? So in my mind, I'm thinking that sounds like a great idea. I can go ahead and get a bottle, prepare for the night, go ahead and pregame. So of course, I take up the offer and go to the liquor store with him. By the time the guy from my complex and I finally meet up to go to the liquor store, it is now the evening of Halloween. So I invited another friend with me to come to the Halloween party. This friend texted me saying that she was running a bit behind. She was meeting me at my place so we could ride to the party together. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, that gives me a little bit of extra time to wind down, relax, and get ready for the evening. So we head back to my place from the liquor store and we're in my apartment, we're pre-gaming, it's getting late. I still have not heard from my friends one thing leads to another we engage in sexual activity and that is how i contracted vaginal hsv1 so of course that was just a short snippet of how i contracted the herpes virus but i want to get into the first indications that something was wrong and that started off with uncomfortable bathroom trips so I will go to the bathroom and after a few times, I noticed that it just was not a pleasant experience for me. So I went to my local drugstore. I picked up a at-home UTI test. I took that once that came back negative and the uncomfortable bathroom trips continued, I followed up with my local urgent care. Now this is when things got a bit rocky because I also did a at-home quick check down there. Things were not looking good. There were some uncomfortable bumps and things that definitely did not look normal. So I wanted to go get those checked out by my local urgent care. Y'all, I called the guy. At this point, I'm freaking out. So I'm in urgent care in the waiting room. I call him, I'm crying. I'm letting him know some of the symptoms and what's going on. Y'all, he is not paying attention to me on the phone. He is having a sidebar conversation. I hear a girl in the background laughing at something he said. I don't even know why he wasn't taking what I was saying serious because I feel like if someone called me saying what I was saying to them, I would take that serious. But he was just not engaging in the conversation at all. And to be completely honest, I did not have his support as I was navigating the diagnosis, but that's neither here or there. So at this point, I get called back to the exam room where the nurse does a full exam. She checks everything out and she looks at some of my concerns. She does let me know that it looks like herpes, but refers me to a local OBGYN. So I go to the OBGYN the following morning where I do a blood work test called a PCR and they also did a culture swab where they swabbed the area of concern. Following the exam, the nurse did confirm, however, before I received my test results that it was likely that they were going to come back positive because it did look like I was herpes positive from what she could see at eyes view. So obviously leaving the doctor's office with that type of news was very sad and discouraging. And the only thing I could do 
was wait for my results for that 100% confirmation. So like I said, I did a blood test and a culture swab. So the blood test came back negative. So there was like a quick moment where I was super excited, but unfortunately the only reason that test was negative was because the infection had not been in my bloodstream enough to show up on a blood test, which would reflect a positive test. So per that information, I feel like I am 100% confident that the person I believe gave me this virus gave me this virus. However, my culture swab did show up positive and that's because that was an active infection. There was an active herpes outbreak. Therefore, that culture swab was an indication that I was herpes positive. So obviously there was a lot of shame revolving around my positive diagnosis. I especially felt a lot of guilt and anger towards myself for not being at that Halloween party. I felt so angry, like I let myself down and it was really hard for me to accept and forgive myself for putting myself in a position that I really didn't have to put myself in. However, it just took me a long time to accept that. I also felt embarrassed, I felt hurt, I felt like no one would wanna be with me anymore. I felt like my dating life was over. I felt like I would never be married anymore. I also felt like the original husband God had for me was now going to be replaced with like this secondhand you ruined your life husband and now you don't get what I originally had for you. You get what you get now because you stepped out of my will. I felt like I was no longer worthy of the goodness of God and the goodness of his blessings. And that took me some time to get over, but he definitely showed me that that is not the case. And I do hope that this channel and these videos, if you are feeling like that, prove to you as well that that is not the case. All right, y'all, so after all of that, where am I today? Y'all, I am confident, I feel beautiful, I am beautiful. My diagnosis is not a thought. I do not think about it unless I have to think about it or unless I'm getting ready to disclose or coming up here and talking about it or coaching someone about it. But it is not a thought that comes to my mind unless I have to actually do something with the fact that I'm herpes positive. I feel excited to move forward in the things that the Lord has called me to. I feel just energized and I honestly feel thankful. I want to use my story as an opportunity to encourage other women just like yourself through their herpes diagnosis. I want to use my story as an opportunity to let women know that there is life beyond this diagnosis. There's life beyond the heartbreak and the disappointment that is associated with the diagnosis. I want this to be an opportunity for you to truly discover the light that is within you. And if you tune into this series and apply the tools and tips throughout these videos, you are going to be unstoppable. So I'm super excited that you're here. As promised, what can you expect throughout the remainder of this series? So ladies, you can expect tips and tricks on how to regain confidence. I'm going to be discussing how to navigate the dating world, how to properly disclose, and the most important thing that you'll be gaining from this series is a community of other herpes positive girlies who are looking to connect. So stay tuned. I'm super excited for this series and I will see you ladies in the next video. Bye.